Hi, it's Greg Hurrell here to talk about Vim. And I just want to do a quick one tonight about creating a distraction-free writing environment in Vim. Um, this is an idea that I first became aware of in the form of Write Room, uh, which is a Mac OS application. Uh, funnily enough, I never used it, um, but it, it's the kind of app that has a fair bit of mind share. It's, to my knowledge, the first one of its type, um, which basically was a full screen takeover, no Chrome, no clutter, no visible controls anywhere. So you could really just focus on the text. Um, and so this looked like the kind of thing that you should be able to do in Vim. Um, and being lazy, I did it in the most cheap way I could imagine, which turns out to not be very good. So I'm going to show you that, and then I'm going to show you some better solutions. Um, so the cheap way that I originally came up with was uh, using Tmux to cut the screen up into splits, um, and in that way create the space that I needed on either side of the Vim instance. And so you can see this right room function that I've got here in my dot files. I'm not going into a great amount of detail on it because you can look it up. I'll put a link to it. Um, and also, I don't think it works that well. Um, so let, let's just have a demo of it rather than looking at how it works. So basically, WR, short for right room. When I run it, it's going to create a TMUX session with these splits on either side to push them into the middle. Then it's going to op uh, open me in, in a document folder. Now, I already had this session open before, so it just reconnected to it. Um, and if I hadn't had an open session, it would have created a new one for me and I would have you know, selected a document to open. But here's just a markdown blog post. I mean, you can see there's a few problems here with this, uh, which make it not very right roomy. We've got the noisy TMUX chrome down the bottom. We've got the status line. Um, we've got line numbers, which we probably don't want. And we've got these show break characters here, which show where the long lines break. And overall, there's quite a bit of visual clutter here. Um, so this was very easy to make, but it's not very good either. So I started looking for a better solution. Um, and I'll show you in my Git commit history here what I found. I, I Googled for like Vim Write Room and I found a few plugins. Um, and then I think this fourth one here I found by Googling something like distraction free Vim or something like that. Um, if you look at the source code for these, they're pretty short, the first three. Um, they handle some edge cases, not too many, but if you look at Goyo, the last one, it might be Goyo or Goyo, I'm not sure. Um, that seems really solid, handles a lot of edge cases, um, and it's highly configurable, which as we'll see is pretty useful. And that's what I ended up going with. So I'm going to uh, show you the GitHub page for that. I'll include a link to this in the notes. Uh, but this is what Goyo looks like. As you can see visually, it's very close to what the real right ring would look like. Um, and also usefully here in the uh, readme, you can see how it provides these auto command hooks that you can connect to to do setup and teardown whenever you enter the focus mode and when you leave it. And the example they give is, you know, turning off the Tmax Chrome um, and toggling some Vim variables. And then when you leave the mode, you know, setting everything back the way it was before. So I'm gonna start by giving you a demo. Um, and then I'm gonna show you some of the custom configuration that I used uh, to make this work a little better um, for my setup. And when I say work a little better, I mean work at all, because out of the box, it didn't actually work. Um, through no fault of the plugin, but because my setup is super complicated and I have a bunch of auto commands going on. Um, so I could start a new tab, but I don't want any of this Chrome up here. So what I'm actually gonna do is start a new window. Um, and you see that I've got iTerm here configured to go all the way to the edges of the screen um, with no border, no Chrome, just to keep things clean. Um, so I'm going to open that same document you see here that this has the same problems that I noted in the original example of things like line numbers and show break characters. So when we go into Goyo mode, you see that all of that goes away. Um, and it actually gives this fantastic kind of distraction-free writing environment. Um, and then when we close that buffer, we go back pretty much the way, the way things were before. Um, so I'm going to go back to where I was and show you the custom configuration that I had to do to make all this work with my bespoke setup. Um, so what, I'm, I'm in my auto commands file here, and uh, if you look here, you'll see I've got 52 lines of convoluted auto commands that actually end up uh, calling you know, auto-loaded functions. So there's actually, this is kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of complexity. Um, and if I open this up, you'll see I've got a bunch of stuff going on, like you know, as I change focus between Vim splits and as I go to the other panes in Tmux, I have you know, syntax highlighting turned off and cursor line on and off and you know, the backgrounds change and the status line change. Basically a bunch of stuff going on, um, any of which could stop Goyo from working because all of this auto command stuff is going to clobber everything that Goyo tries to set up so carefully. So let me show you um, what I've got going on here with my hooks to make it work. 
Um, you see I've got a Goyo enter hook that's going to call my Goyo enter function up here. Um, and then when I leave, it's going to call Goyo leave. Now this is not a totally reversible operation. I'm playing pretty fast and loose here. Um, you'll see the first thing I do is like, I just turn off all the auto commands by deleting them up here. Um, and likewise, I have some color related auto commands that I also turn off and I actually don't restore either uh, when I go to the Goyo leave function. I still have to do a bit of refactoring to make this neatly reversible, but I'm not even sure I want to. It's probably not worth it. Um, but basically I blow away all those auto commands and then I go down here and I grab some settings that as far as I know Goyo usually doesn't touch, uh, but that I do want to be turned off. Um, and you'll see I save the original values and then down here I make them as clean as I possibly can. So I turn show break off. Um, I turn the status line into just like an empty space. Turn off cursor line, I turn off the mode. Um, so it won't show like insert mode when I'm in insert mode. Um, and then I make sure that uh, the non-text characters are invisible. So those are things that would normally be shown by show break. Um, and then finally I turn off the Tmux Chrome if I'm in Tmux. Um, and likewise, when I'm coming out of Goyo mode, I just put all the settings back the way they were before. Um, this is not super clean, it's a little bit hard coded, but I put non-text back the way it was before. I turn on the Chrome and then set up my auto commands again, but notably not the color ones, which is a bit of a bug. Um, but it does basically work. So for example, if I go into Goyo mode here um, and then I leave Goyo mode, you'll see the auto commands pretty much work. Good enough anyway. Um, so that's all I've got for tonight. I uh, hope this is useful to you. Give the plugin a try uh, and, uh, and I'll be back again another day with another Beam screencast for you.